Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. I just got back from Nome. This image is of a bristle-thighed curlew, a rather rare shorebird that shows up in two places in Alaska and then spends the winter, or our winter, in the South Pacific. So it travels, you know, probably 7,000 miles to develop its breeding territory in Alaska. This tutorial today, though, is about using the spot AF point focus area to get a sharper image. And there are several situations where it takes using spot AF point to get sharper images. So what is the spot AF point? Well, that's the very small, usually represented by a square with either a circle in the center or another square inside of a square. And it's about half the size of a normal autofocus point and it allows you to do pinpoint accurate focusing. So it's precision focusing. You have half the size of a normal autofocus point, so you can pinpoint it right on the bird's eye or on the bird's head, and you can shoot through branches. If a bird pokes its head up behind a rock or something, you'll be able to just grab right on the head. You have more control over where you're placing the autofocus point. There are a couple of downsides to this, and we'll talk about those in a minute. So this is an orange crowned warbler. It was moving through these bushes quite a bit, but I was able to use the spot AF focus point to get it right on the head and almost the eye of the bird. And so I was able to get a nice sharp focus. Now this is a common red pole, and you'll notice that a lot of these images, the birds are small, they're songbirds. I'm shooting them with them smack dab in the middle of the frame. And I'm doing this because the lens is sharper there and the birds are a little bit further away than I would like. It's sometimes just very difficult in the tundra to get close to the birds in the bushes like this. And also there could be bears in the bushes, so you kind of want to stay by the roads. But I will do my composition and crop this later in post-processing. What I want to talk to you about today is just getting a sharp image. And this red pole is sharp because I have spot AF point right on its head and its eye. Now this is a shot that I probably won't use very much, but it's really indicative of how this works. I'm shooting through all of these branches. You can see that on the left side of the bird, you know, part of the bird is covered up by a blurry branch. And I've got the autofocus point on the head and shoulder of the bird. Now in this particular image, I've post-processed and I sharpened up the head a little bit. If we look to the original capture, the autofocus point was on the shoulder and the head's a little bit blurry, but I was able to fix that in post-processing. But there's so much clutter in this one that I'm probably not going to use it very much. But it's a good example of how this really works shooting through branches with this pinpoint uh, focusing. Here's a situation with a rock ptarmigan where the ptarmigan would poke its head up every once in a while to take a look over its shoulder at us. And we're quite a distance away. I'm shooting with a 600 millimeter lens, a 1.4 extender, and a 7D Mark II. So I have 1,344 millimeters of effective focal length. And so I am quite a ways from this bird. Also, we get a little bit of heat distortion, um, even though it's about nine o'clock in the morning. But I got the focus on the eye and the shot works because the bird's pretty sharp and you get that kind of coy look over the shoulder from this bird that's kind of checking us out and keeping an eye on us. Now here's another example of where if you look at this image it looks like I kind of blew the focus because I have the spot AF point right on the shoulder. I missed the head. If I would have been on the head this image would look sharper. But in post-processing, I was able to sharpen up the image enough using clarity and sharpening and the dehaze tool and things like that so that I could get a sharper image. So shooting in Gnome is really interesting. It's 21 hours of daylight. You can actually shoot about 12 or 13 of those hours pretty easily. The middle of the day gets kind of hot. It's really unusual because around nine o'clock, the tundra starts to heat up a little bit. And if you're shooting too far away, if the birds are too far away, then you get these heat waves coming up off the tundra. And so by nine or 10 o'clock, it's just too late to shoot. But then around 6 p.m., it starts to get good again. And then between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m., the sun is technically down. It doesn't really get dark, but it gets kind of dusky. You can walk around without a headlamp or a flashlight or anything. When I got back from Nome, in my mail, I found that I had the August issue of Birdwatching Magazine, and they did an article in there about 11 new books for birders. And my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography, was featured in that article. So I'm pretty thankful, really grateful to be um, included in that article, and it's pretty exciting for me. My book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography, is available on Kindle and Amazon as a paperback. The book was a 
number one new release on Kindle. It's been a number one bestseller on Kindle several times. And it's been reviewed by Birdwatching Magazine now, so that's pretty cool. You can also get a signed copy of my book at timboyerphotography.com to you, and I'll send it out priority mail, so you'll get it a couple of days after you order it. If you enjoy what I'm doing on my channel, give me a subscribe, like, and share this with your friends. They might want to learn more about bird photography as well. I do a tutorial once a week, usually posting it on Wednesday, so until next week, good shooting, get out there, have some fun, create some great images, and I will see you later. Thanks, bye.